Francois Dominique Toussaint Louverture, the 20th of May 1743 to 7 April 1803, also known as Toussaint Louverture or Toussaint Breda, was the leader of the Haitian Revolution. His military genius and political acumen transformed an entire society of slaves into the first successful slave uprising that led to the independent state of Haiti. It was the greatest slave uprising since Spartacus, who led the revolt against the Roman Republic, but was ultimately defeated. The success of the Haitian Revolution shook the institution of slavery throughout the New World. Toussaint Louverture began his military career as a leader of the 1791 slave rebellion in the French colony of Saint-Domingue. He was by then a free black man and a Jacobin. Initially allied with the Spaniards of neighboring Santo Domingo, Toussaint switched allegiance to the French when they abolished slavery. He gradually established control over the whole island and used political and military tactics to gain dominance over his rivals. Throughout his years in power, he worked to improve the economy and security of Saint-Domingue. He restored the plantation system using paid labor, negotiated trade treaties with Britain and the United States, and maintained a large and well-disciplined army. In 1801, he promulgated an autonomous constitution for the colony, with himself as governor-general for life. In 1802 he was forced to resign by forces sent by Napoleon Bonaparte to restore French authority in the former colony. He was deported to France, where he died in 1803. The Haitian Revolution continued under his lieutenant, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, who declared independence on January 1, 1804. The French had lost two-thirds of forces sent to the island in an attempt to suppress the revolution, most died of yellow fever. Early life Little is known for certain about Toussaint Louverture's early life, as there are contradictory accounts and evidence about this period. The earliest records of his life are his recorded remarks and the reminiscences of his second legitimate son Isaac Louverture. Most histories identify Toussaint's father as Gao Uginao, a younger son of the King of Alade, a West African historical kingdom located in modern-day Benin, who had been captured in war and sold into slavery. His mother Pauline was Gao Uganu's second wife. The couple had several children, of whom Toussaint was the eldest son. Pierre Baptiste Simon is usually considered to have been his godfather. Toussaint is thought to have been born on the plantation of Breda at Eau de Cap in Saint-Domingue, which was owned by the Comte de Renoir Cute and later managed by Bayern de Libertat. His date of birth is uncertain, but his name suggests he was born on All Saints' Day. He was probably about 50 at the start of the revolution in 1791. Various sources have given birth dates between 1739 and 1746. Because of the lack of written records, Toussaint himself may not have known his exact birth date. In childhood, he earned the nickname Fatras Batten, suggesting he was small and weak, though he was to become known for his stamina and riding prowess. An alternative explanation of two saints' origins is that he arrived at Breda with a new overseer who took up his duties in 1772. Education to San is believed to have been well educated by his godfather Pierre Baptiste. Historians have speculated as to two saints' intellectual background. His extant letters demonstrate a command of French in addition to Creole patois. He was familiar with Epictetus the Stoic philosopher who had lived as a slave, and his public speeches as well as his life's work, according to his biographers, show a familiarity with Machiavelli. Some cite Abbe Raynal, who wrote against slavery, as a possible influence. The wording of proclamation issued by then-rebel slave leader Toussaint on August 29, 1793, which may have been the first time he publicly used the moniker Louverture seems to refer to an anti-slavery passage in Abbe Reynolds' A Philosophical and Political History of the Settlements and Trade of the Europeans in the East and West Indies. He may also have attained some education from Jesuit missionaries.
His medical knowledge is attributed to familiarity with African herbal medical techniques as well those techniques commonly found in Jesuit-administered hospitals. A few legal documents signed on to saints' behalf between 1778 and 1781 raise the possibility that he could not write at that time. Throughout his military and political career, he made use of secretaries for most of his correspondence. A few surviving documents in his own hand confirm that he could write, though his spelling in the French language was strictly phonetic, marriage and children in 1782. Toussaint married Suzanne Simone Baptiste Louverture, who was thought to have been his cousin or his godfather's daughter. Towards the end of his life, he told General Caffarelli that he had fathered 16 children, of whom 11 had predeceased him. Not all his children can be identified for certain, but his three legitimate sons are well known. The eldest, Placida, was probably adopted by Toussaint and is generally thought to be Suzanne's first child with a mulatto, Seraphim Leclerc. The two sons born of his marriage with Suzanne were Isaac and St. John. Slavery, freedom and working life, I was born a slave, but nature gave me the soul of a free man, until recently. Historians believe that Toussaint had been a slave until the start of the revolution. The discovery of a marriage certificate dated 1777 shows that he was freed in 1776 at the age of 33. This find retrospectively clarified a letter of 1797, in which he said he had been free for 20 years. It seems he still maintained an important role on the breeder plantation until the outbreak of the revolution, presumably as a salaried employee. He had initially been responsible for the livestock, but by 1791, his responsibilities most likely included acting as coachman to the overseer, de libertat, and as a slave driver, charged with organizing the workforce. As a free man, Toussaint began to accumulate wealth and property. Surviving legal documents show him renting a small coffee plantation worked by a dozen of his slaves. He would later say that by the start of the revolution, he had acquired a reasonable fortune, and was the owner of a number of properties and slaves at Ennery. Religion and spirituality throughout his life Toussaint was known as a devout Roman Catholic. Although Vodo was generally practiced on St. Domingue in combination with Catholicism, little is known for certain if Toussaint had any connection with it. Officially as ruler of St. Domingue, he discouraged it. Historians have suggested that he was a member of high degree of the Masonic Lodge of St. Domingue, mostly based on a Masonic symbol he used in his signature. The membership of several free blacks and white men close to him has been confirmed.